In this video, we're going to try to cover everything about timers. Now, first things first, how do we make a timer? The fastest way and easiest way to make a symbol timer is by simply using the text node. All we have to do is go to the effects tab and then we're going to find the title section. And then here in this title section, we're going to add a text plus node, which is the text that is the fusion text, basically. Here where it says custom title, we can right click. There's a text timer and there's also the time code. Now, which one should we use? The main difference between these two is in the modifiers and the way that they work. Now, the text timer has the start and reset controls. The problem with this is that once you press start, it will just start rolling from whatever number you have input there and it just keeps going. It doesn't really follow the length of the composition. So you, let's say you add this onto your timeline and you want to render these. It's going to render with whatever time it shows up on screen. So it's not going to be in sync at all with what you want to do, right? So we're going to use the time code and that's the fastest way to do it. Why are we using this one? If we just press play right here, then it works perfectly like a simple timer. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do here. If you don't want to go into fusion, you can use the right on effect here to simply get rid of the elements that you don't want to have. Like, let's say we're going to take out the hours and the frames and just leave the minutes and the seconds and we have that there if we go here and open fusion we can select this template and that's going to allow us to see the modifier i'm going to restart the right on effects so you can see better what i'm talking about if we go to the modifiers up here you can see here there are the actual elements that we had taken out with the right on effect so if you know a little bit about fusion then you can just go and do this here here you can simply select these and have only the minutes, for example, or just the seconds and just have a little bit more control over it. And also you can select the frames that you're going to be using. Now, I'm not sure, but I think if you just drop a text node into a timeline, that's let's say 30 frames per second, this should be automatically at 30 frames per second when you add the time code effect. Let me just give a quick shout out to the timers. So this video is brought to you by MOA. 10 different timers that come in two different speeds or frame rates that you can use 24 and 30 fps so if you want to support the channel check out the timers they're like six bucks on the swaldi store so check the link down in the description to get these timers because adsense is not doing that great anyways let's continue now the next way that you can create a timer is by using expressions now why would you want to use expressions the simplest answer is probably just because you can and also you can actually have a little bit more control over the timers or countdowns when you're using expressions. Now, if you want to build your timers using expressions, these are the two expressions that you would most likely use. Now, before anything, to create an expression, all you have to do is go to the text plus file, right click, and then go to the expressions. Here is where you would input either of those expressions. Now, this one is for the timer to go up and this one is for the timer to actually be a countdown timer. There's two key elements here that will be important for you to know. This seal in each of these. This could be either seal or it could be floor. Now, what's the difference between using each of those? If you use seal, then the expression will round the number to the nearest highest number. That's why when you go one frame forward, you can see this timer right here is already at one. And then this one still has to be a full second before it actually goes to four. Now, the same thing happened here at the end when you're just one frame away from the last point then that one becomes zero and this one it's already at five for a while basically if you want the timer to just show up at the nearest next number you can just leave it at seal or use floor if you want the second to actually show up after the second has passed now if you use floor on your countdown timer you will have the opposite reaction so it will go to four right away so if you want the timers to be a little bit more accurate what you can probably do is use floor when you're using a timer so we're actually you're gonna change the text up here to floor so that it's more accurate and then use seal when you're using countdown timer so then the second changes after a whole second has passed right instead of right at the first frame or keyframe now one thing you have to take into account here is that this one is not actually five seconds it's actually five seconds in one frame because if we keep these at five seconds since we're using the floor it's rounding to the nearest lowest number then this one will stay at four right so you whatever number you want to use you have to add another frame right here 
So open your clip duration here and then just press one or add one more frame and then it will reach that exact number that you want it to reach. So that's how expressions work basically. And you will want to know this only if you want to have a little bit more control of what your timer does. I'm going to give you a little tip of what you can do to add more animated elements. As you can see here in this timer that we have here, here there's a couple of animated elements that also move when the timer is moving. The easiest way to do this is by using the anim curves. I'm going to show you these in this other timer that we had built earlier. We're going to use a time code and we're going to go into fusion just for a little bit. Now only show up the seconds, not the frames. Now here we can press control and spacebar and let's add a background and I'm going to add a line. Let's just add a line. Now let's say we want this line to just go like these. Now you have to make sure that the timer is actually in the foreground. So we're going to press Ctrl T and change these so that our line is in the background. Now if we want to have those lines in the background animated, when the timer goes up or reaches the end, we want the lines to be all the way till the end. We're going to go to the polygon and we're going to adjust the length like that. So we're going to right click and then modify with anim curves. We press play right now. It's going to start there and then it's going to move and it's going to reach the end when the timer reaches the maximum number. And that's how you can use the anim curves to add more elements that you want to animate at the same time so that you want them to like fill uh, fill up the like a clock or something, right? Now you can also add animate the position with the anim curves and if you do that, then it looks a little bit more interesting. Look at that. Now, how do you make sure that your timer is dynamic? To know if your timer is dynamic, all you have to do is drag this in the edit page and then it should automatically adapt to whatever the length of your fusion composition is. Now, if you want to be completely accurate with the time, press Ctrl D and then you're going to make sure to use the seconds, let's say 12 second timer and then make sure to add one so that there's that extra frame right here that shows the last element. Now in this case, in this timer, if we go negative one, it's gonna start 12, then a whole second is gonna pass, and then we're gonna bring this down all the way until it reaches zero. Now, one last thing, if you have created a timer using a simple text node, and you wanna turn this into a countdown timer, you can turn this into a compound clip and make this a countdown and then we're going to press R and then we can reverse the speed and then we can see that it's going the opposite way and it's going to end at zero. So if you're not completely used to fusion yet, the easiest way is going to be using the compound clip method. Now, if you do want to learn a little bit more about animating or adding more elements to your timers, you can watch this video in which I share a bunch of tips for when you want to animate titles.